Hello, Leon Turner from Trend here. Uh, today I'm, I'm going to talk to you about IQ5 controllers, the brand new hardware platform from Trend. This development shares much in common with IQ4 and in fact going backwards all the way through to IQ2s and 1s. Um, as always, this is backwards compatible um, and strategies from an IQ2 can easily be brought forward into an IQ5. So there is much in common with our our legacy controllers. However, there is also much difference. Ever since we put an IP port onto a controller um, some 20 plus years ago now with the IQ3 and led the charge somewhat in doing so and putting BMS systems onto the e internet and the ethernet and so on, cybersecurity has been a very, very important part of what we do as the industry has demanded. Now, the challenge of securing a large network of BMS controllers onto an IT system is largely making it simple enough so that engineers deploy it correctly and secure the system. If the, the cybersecurity can be uh, absolutely rock solid, but if it is difficult to deploy, people find ways not to do that. This latest enhancement in the cybersecurity piece is what I'm going to talk to you about today. And you'll see that hopefully that most of the effort has gone into not only making it all encrypted end to end, so that's from the software right the way through to the IO modules, which is very different to the way most expandable systems are deployed nowadays, but also in making it simple. In fact, it's going to take me far longer to describe it than it will be to actually do it. And to that end, I'll start with a, a bit of a live demonstration. That's the easiest way to, to show you this. As always, we start with IP tool. Now, I've got two controllers here. I have taken the liberty of giving them both a static IP address and set up various trend and virtual CNC connection point parameters, but not much else. In fact, and you'll see, hopefully, there's no security in these controllers. If I go to the web page, you see there's nothing in here. Now, there are no users, but that is a fundamental difference, which I'll explain in a little while, because they won't be at the end of this either. Now, if I go to my controllers, I need to type in one critical piece of information here, and that is the network key. That needs to be the same for every controller I wish to join this network. So for me, it's only two controllers. It could be a thousand. Now, I could go ahead and type these manually into this box, um, but that leaves me slightly open to mistyping human error, which I'm very susceptible to. So we won't do that. What I'm going to do is type in my network key here. Now, I've misspelt that quite clearly, but just to prove it doesn't really matter. I'm going to do it as a, a bulk change. In fact, that's going to bug me, so I am going to change it to something more sensible. Better. And I want to send that to all controllers. I'm going to save that to the registry. So having typed the network key in, checked it, I'm now going to write these to the selected devices behind me. Now, obviously, were there one or two, just simply typing it in wouldn't have been too difficult. But as if there were a thousand, that could become quite tedious quite quickly. And chances of mistyping go up largely. So that is all sent. You'll notice the controllers have generated a machine to machine key. Other than that, nothing much has changed. Now, if I write my connection into set so I can reuse it then we are almost finished with IP tool. I'll come back and show you something in a little while about how that has affected it. But the next part is interset. Now, inset, if I go away and I select my comms connection method, which is to one of those controllers, and go away and try and connect, set now asks me to validate my connection. Now, this is another security enhancement, which was the same in IQ4, in fact, and it means I need to prove that I'm physically on site and not trying to get in from outside somewhere. And what it requires me to do is physically press a button on the front of the controller, the service pin. That's that done. Luckily, my controllers are quite close to me, but you do have 10 minutes to go and find it. Now, this is very different. So now I'm setting up a system account. This system account will be synchronized throughout the entire system, be that two controllers or a thousand. So I do not have to go through and add individual users 
to every single controller, which is the, the way we used to do this and still do in IQ4. So now I need to type in a password. I'm going to make that nice and simple. These are not recommended values at all and type in an email address. That has to be a valid email address for, ex for reasons I'll explain in a little while. So that is all good. I'm not going to create another account right now. I'm going to go with that one. So now that will go off and will sync to every controller I have connected to. So that entire system. Now, if we go back to IP tool, you'll notice these controllers are now locked. Now I haven't done anything else. And if I go to the web page, you'll now notice both controllers are now secured and I have to log in in order to get any further. So what that means is literally within two or three minutes, I could have secured an entire system. So having added our user with the whole system account, I'm now going to go on and show you how to either delete or add users as we see fit. There are three kinds of users. So you can see on here, we've got an admin level user, an engineer and a supervisor. So we've already added the admin user. The main difference between that and the engineer is the admin user is permitted to add and delete users. So if I add an engineer here, this would be someone using set, for example, to configure the system. And again, we need a valid email. can set up an expiry date should we wish so this can be a temporary account if I go back to the end of November this year as I type and we can go on and add a further one and the supervisor is for IQ vision for example and I copy the application key to the clipboard and then I can use that in IQ vision to help secure it all and then it's very simple to just commit that and send it all down. I can have multiples of each one of those type of accounts. And that is it. All of those users have gone down to the controllers and the whole system is synchronized. Now, I should say, again, I mentioned it earlier, there are no users in the controller. The only time we would need controllers, sorry, users in the controller itself is when we have a local pin pad type thing or a local display. I mentioned earlier the email accounts were very important and they come into their into play when we are in a situation where we've forgotten the password for an account or no one knows any of the credentials for accounts at which point we need a way to be able to provide people access. So there's several levels if you've just forgotten a password then we then we know a username and we can reset that using this QR code, which is a, a has a URL behind it, which takes us off to a trend server, which will provide a temporary password for that account, should everything match up. In the more extreme example, where we have site recovery, that means that everything has been forgotten, including the, the site uh, usernames, passwords, and so on. That then creates an email to go off to trend uh, tech support, who will then send back some details should everything check out. You are required to be on site to do that and push the button on the controller as an extra level of security. I hope that's been a useful and interesting overview of the IQ5 system security process. There will be more content to follow on IQ5 as we go through launch. Please do look out for more. Thank you very much. Goodbye.